My name is Joe Broxson and I'm a senior developer at Adenio Embedded. Today I'm going to talk about Silverlight on Windows Embedded CE 6.0 R3. Adenio Embedded worked recently with Microsoft on the development of the Silverlight application that was used for the launch of R3 at the Embedded Systems Conference in Boston. Participating in this development, we acquired significant experience on this brand new technology and I'd like to share with you some of the key takeaways we obtained. First, let's talk briefly about what Silverlight does for you. With Embedded Silverlight, you have an incredible amount of control over the user experience on your device. This goes far beyond web pages and allows you to create rich, powerful applications and replacement shells that can be used on Windows CE devices. A designer can work with Expression Blend to give you the look and feel that you want within the application. This completely customized user interface can be free of OEM logos or the Windows shell, but still utilizes the power of Windows Embedded CE. In addition, since this is written in C++, you have the ability to migrate and use your legacy code with the newly created Silverlight interfaces. So what is Silverlight Embedded? Silverlight Embedded is a subset of the Silverlight Web Core. This is a rendering engine that allows for creation of rich UIs using the XAML markup language. It's been rewritten in C++ for speed and compatibility with Windows Embedded CE. This allows for the creation of native XAML-based user interfaces and applications that have access to the hardware on your embedded system. The embedded version of Silverlight includes the core rendering engine as well as other APIs. It also includes a sample demonstrating how to accelerate your platform for Silverlight Embedded. So what hardware is needed to run these Silverlight Embedded applications? Well, any platform with a display that can run Windows Embedded CE 6.0 R3 can also use Silverlight. For maximum performance, some work towards acceleration may be required within the platform itself. Beyond that, no other modification is required to your BSP. Silverlight Embedded is integrated into CE 6.0 R3 as a catalog item. By selecting that item, the new API set and rendering engine will also be added to your OS design. So what steps do you need to take to add support for Silverlight on your platform? Well first, you need to update to Windows CE 6.0 R3. This is a free download from Microsoft. Next, open your OS design and add the catalog item Silverlight for Windows Embedded. You'll need to rebuild your solution. This includes doing a sysgen since you have added an item from the catalog to your project. You may also want to add the IE 6.0 XAML UI sample browser. This will allow you to test and make sure everything is functioning properly on your platform. Once this is done, you may wish to go back and do some performance optimization by integrating OpenGL uh, or Direct Show support in the BSP itself. Now that we have a platform to support Silverlight, let's look, take a look at creating an application. First, we need to design the user interface. This will be done in XAML. We're going to use Expression Blend 2.0 SP1 from Microsoft to do this. This is the best version of uh, expression to use. Expression Blend 3.0, you may have to do some tweaking to the actual XAML itself in order to make it work properly with embedded Silverlight. So let's take a look at Expression Blend. Here you can see I've already started Expression Blend 2. Let's go ahead and select New Project. And now we can select Silverlight 2 Application. This choice is available because I have SP1 installed. If you don't see this option, you do need to go ahead and install Service Pack 1 for Expression Blend 2.0. Let's name this project Silverlight Lab. Now below you'll see a Dropbox for the language that you're going to use. There's Visual Basic and C Sharp. As I already mentioned, Embedded Silverlight uses C++ for the code behind exclusively right now so we can actually ignore that Dropbox. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now you can see we have an empty project up. Let's go ahead and add an element. Over here on the left, I can double click on this icon to add a button to the design. Let's go ahead and resize the button. And if I move the mouse just slightly, you'll notice that the pointer changes to a rotate control. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll rotate it roughly 45 degrees and go ahead and reposition the button so it's in a slightly better place. Now that we've done this, 
Let's go ahead and take a look over here on the right. You can see three tabs, Design, XAML, and Split. If I click on Split, we can see both the UI design view as well as the actual XAML that's generated. If I click on the button in the top pane, we can see this, the XAML for that button highlighted below. Here we can see, in addition, a section that says Render Transform. Now, underneath that, we can see a Rotate Transform here. And this Rotate Transform is to 53 degrees. Well, I wanted 45. I missed it slightly. Let me go ahead and change that. Now, when I changed it, notice the button also changed as well. So now, over here on the right, we have a Properties tab. Let's go ahead and select that. Here you can see there are a number of different properties available, things like the appearance, the layout, uh, the text that is actually on the button, and so on. You can also see down here, transform, and within that we have rotate. There you can see another place where we could actually set this angle. What I want to do right now though is I want to give the button a name. Let's go ahead and call it My Button. Now that I've done that, if I take a look at the XAML code, we can see that the name My Button was applied to the actual object. That's really all there is to it. We've created a very, very basic UI inside of Expression Blend. Now that we've created a user interface, we need to integrate it into an application. To do this, we will start by creating a sub-project in Platform Builder. We will then include the required libs and include files. After that, we'll add the XAML we just created as a resource in the subproject. You could also load this from the file system on the device itself, but doing it from a resource is nice because it makes it self-contained executable. After that, we need to add some initialization code and then create delegates as needed to handle different events from the user interface. Let's go ahead and bring up Platform Builder and take a look at doing this. So here I have a pre-existing OS design open in Visual Studio. First, we're going to take a look at the Catalog Items view. We're going to search here for Silverlight. And the first thing that comes up is the Internet Explorer 6.0 XAML UI sample browser. This is the one I mentioned earlier that you might want to add to your OS design just for testing. Let's go ahead and hit find the next hit. Here we are, Silverlight for Windows Embedded. Since it's checked, we know that I already have this added to our OS design. Next, let's switch to the Solution Explorer view, and let's add a new subproject. Right-click, Add New Subproject. Here we're going to choose Windows CE Application. We'll call this Silverlight Lab. Click Next. In this case, I'm going to choose a simple Windows Embedded CE application. Click Finish, and our subproject's been added. So we're going to right-click on Resource Files, go to Add, New Item, and here we will call it XAML. Go ahead and click Add. Now we can open the resource file, right-click, select Add Resource, and we want to import the XAML file. So let's go ahead and click on Import, and let's browse to the Silverlight Lab that we created here. Make sure that we view all files. Here we want to grab page.xaml. We want to make sure that that is the one that we're grabbing. That's the one that we were editing before where we added the button to it. Go ahead and select that. For resource type, XAML. Click OK. And there we can see it's been added. Next, we need to add a few things to the sources file for this subproject. Let's go ahead and double click on Silverlight Lab. First thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we include 